Hey everybody, or should I say future scam sluice. Today we're diving into the nitty gritty of how to use the scam classifier model. If you've ever felt lost in a jungle of scam identification, this model is your trusty machete to cut your way through. Well, let's go ahead and start cutting through the confusion and get this party started. The scam classifier model, it is actually designed to help differentiate and classify scams and attempted scams well, through a series of questions. Think of it as like your choose your own adventure book for scam detection. I used to love those types of books. Well, are you ready for this? Because here we go. Step one, definition of a scam. Well, in step one, what we're doing is we're going to ask and answer the question, does the incident meet the definition of a scam? This means there had to be deception or manipulation intended to achieve financial gain. If yes, well, you've taken your first step in the world of scam classification. If no, well, it might be time to look somewhere else for the culprit because you're done. It's, it's not there if we don't go on to the next step. But if we say yes, then we're going to say yes this time. We go to step two. What happened? See, step two, this is the question. What action resulted from the scam? In this step, what you need to figure out is if the authorized party was tricked, manipulated into making a payment, or if they were manipulated into enabling a fraudster to access their account. It's like determining if you were led into a trap or if you accidentally opened the door for an intruder. What happened? Were they tricked and manipulated or did it happen on accident? Let's go on though. Step three, deceived or manipulated? Well, step three is, how was the party deceived or manipulated? That one can be some interesting times in figuring out. This is where we categorize the incident. Was it a product or services scam, like buying or selling something? Or was it a relationship and trust scam, where someone posed as maybe a business or an organization, a vendor or an agency, or another trusted party? There's a lot of them out there. If it doesn't fit these categories, you might need the fraud classifier model to dig a little deeper. So there's always another resource. But let's keep going. Step four, classify the type of scam. Yeah, that's right. In step four, we're going to classify the type based on the type of deception. And this, this is really where the scam classifier model shines with its nine scam types. Let's break them down. Merchandise scam. Think of this as the online shopping nightmare where you paid for an item that never arrived. Ah, man, nobody likes that one. Investment scam. Promises of high returns that turn out to be nothing but hot air. Hmm. Property sale or rental scam. You were deceived in paying for a property that doesn't exist or isn't for rent or sell. I knew I shouldn't have got that beachfront property in Arizona. Hmm. Romance imposter scam. Love isn't just blind. Sometimes it's costly when a fraudster poses as a romantic partner. But I thought she loved me and needed the money to come see me. Oh, it's a sad one. It really is. Government imposter scam. When someone pretends to be from the government to get your money. I'm with the IRS and I'm here to collect now or you're going to go to jail. That's a really scary one. Bank imposter scam. Fraudsters posing as your bank or credit union to gain access to your account. Well, we saw there was a problem with your account. We need your information to verify who you are so we can log in and fix it. No bueno. Business imposter scam. This is where a scammer is actually pretending to be a legitimate business. Much like our other scams, but they're pretending to be a legitimate business. Relative family friend scam. The emotional play where someone poses as a family member or friend in need. Dad, if, if you don't send the money now, I'm never going to be able to make it home. Oh, it's another scary one. But then there's number nine, the other trusted party scam. It's really the catch all for any other trusted, trusted being the key word, entity being impersonated. Well, there you have it. With these steps, you can navigate the scam classifier model like a pro. It is like having a detailed map, a detailed guide for you to go through the treacherous terrain of scam detection, ensuring you don't miss any of the critical details. So the next time you encounter a potential scam, remember these steps. Use the scam classifier model, please. See, by using the scam classifier model, you're not just a 
identifying the scam, you're empowering yourself with the knowledge to be able to report that you've detected and that you are detecting and also be able to mitigate these detections, these deceptions accurately. Stay sharp, stay informed, and let's keep those scammers at bay. And if you're looking for more payments education, well, then you need to head over to paymentsprofessor.com. But for now, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, class dismissed.